to clergy, family, friends. This is a story of a man who didn't believe in God, and he didn't hesitate to let others know how he felt about this religion and religious holidays like Christmas. His wife, however, did believe, and she raised their children to also have faith in God and Jesus, despite these hurtful comments. On one snowy Christmas Eve, his wife was taking their children to a Christmas Eve service in the farm community that they lived in. She asked him to come, but he refused. That story is nonsense, he said. Why would God lower himself to come to earth as a man? That's ridiculous. So she and the children left, and he stayed home. A while later, the winds grew stronger, and the snow turned into a blizzard. As the man looked out the window, all he saw was a blinding snowstorm. He sat down to relax before the fire for the evening. Then he heard a loud thump. Something had hit the window. Then another thump. He looked out, but he couldn't see more than a few feet. When the snow let up a little, he ventured outside to see what could have been beating on his window. In the field near his house, he saw a flock of wild geese. Apparently, they had been flying south for the winter when they got caught in the snowstorm and could not go on. They were lost and stranded on his farm with no food or shelter. They just flapped their wings and flew around the field in low circles blindly and aimlessly. A couple of them had flown into his window, it seemed. The man felt sorry for the geese and he wanted to help them. The barn would be a great place for them to stay, he thought. It is warm and safe. Surely they could spend the night and wait out the storm. So he walked over to the barn and opened the doors wide. Then he watched and waited, hoping that they would notice the open barn and go inside. But the geese just fluttered around aimlessly and did not seem to notice the barn or realize what it could mean for them. The man tried to get their attention, but that just seemed to scare them and they moved further away. He went into the house and came back out with some bread, broke it up, and made a breadcrumbs trail leading to the barn. They still did not catch on. Now he was just getting frustrated. He got behind them and tried to shoo them toward the barn, but they only got more scared and scattered in every direction except for the barn. Nothing he could do to nothing he could do could get them to go into the barn where they would be warm and safe. Why don't they follow me? he exclaimed. Can't they see this is the only place where they can survive the storm? He thought for a moment and realized that they just wouldn't follow a human. If only I were a goose, then I could save them, he said out loud. Then he had an idea. He went into the barn, got one of his own geese, and carried it in his arms as he circled around behind the flock of wild geese. He then released it. His goose flew through the flock and straight into the barn, and one by one, the other geese followed into safety. He stood silently for a moment as the words he had spoken a few minutes earlier replayed in his mind. If only I were a goose, then I could save them. Then he thought about what he had said to his wife earlier. Why would God want to be like us? That's ridiculous. Suddenly, it all made sense. That is what God had done. We were like the geese, blind, lost, and perishing. God had his son come become, become like us so that he could show us the way and save us. That was the meaning of Christmas, he realized. As the winds and the blinding snow died down, his soul became quiet, and he pondered this wonderful thought. Suddenly, he understood what Christmas was all about, why Christ had come. Years of doubt and disbelief vanished like the passing storm. He fell to his knees in the snow and prayed the first prayer of his life. Thank you, Jesus, for coming in human form to show me the way out of the storm. Thank you, Sharon.